what's the one thing I could do that would make the biggest difference? What are the few things I could do today or this week? What are the most important goals I could set? Small term goals. What are the parts of myself that are the greatest parts of myself that I could aim towards this realization of this dream? Welcome to the boy with Jeff Spikes. The show about achieving goals, embracing growth, and finding your true path. And now, here's your host, Jeff Spikes. Hello and welcome to The Point. It's a little more serious topic today for you. Uh, if you heard last week's and t t tapped into our, our guest spot that I had on uh, with Tony Lynch on grief, let's talk about it. Um, then you know that we're coming up on really trying to be useful and helpful. And let's cut out trying. Let's, let, I heard myself say that. Let's cut out trying and let's be more useful. You're going to be able to consider three things today. And over the next few weeks, you're going to be able to consider and really dig deeper into these points. And, you know, the idea is talking about getting stuck, getting stuck in a workflow, getting stuck in the mud in a business process where you lose the bigger vision, getting stuck in the details of all the stories we make up about how, how we're being treated or how we see other people being treated, all these things that can get you stuck. The three things that are happening when, when you get stuck, one is that you're lacking vision and purpose in your life. Your why isn't large enough. The smaller your why, the smaller your vision or purpose, the, the more the little things can really drag you down. It's important to learn to be motivated toward what you want and to develop the sense of what you want. And it's important, the larger that you can consider, the larger time frame, the larger stretch or reach in your imagination that you can consider, it, the better, because it gives your whole self, your unconscious and conscious mind, your whole self, even the parts of you that are working when you're sleeping, something to work on, something to focus on that's much bigger than what you can handle on your own. Some people call that a fantasy, but you've heard the discussions in the past talking about the difference between a fantasy and a dream and an actual goal. And the idea is, is that if you can put true feeling and emotion and get all your senses involved in knowing what it will be like to have achieved something, it's no longer a fantasy. It's a, it's a dream and then you can have goals to, that will set you along the way that are nothing more than benchmarks to a larger ideation of what you want. Not having that vision, that purpose, can cause a lot of... Uh, one thing it can cause just naturally is that the parts of your mind that work when you're sleeping, the parts of yourself that work that you're, when you're sleeping, could just start to decide to work on all kinds of other things going on in your life. Because it's going to stay busy no matter what. right? So it's going to get busy processing all the information. You're, that it's being fed whether you're choosing it or not. So choosing the biggest vision helps create that for you. An add-on to that that, makes, that adds to the stuck point is feeling overwhelmed. If too much is happening in life, if you're, t if, if you're taking on more than, more than you can, if you're trying to move forward towards something but you don't have a big enough vision for it so it feels like a real grind, and you're not asking the questions, what's the one thing I could do that would make the biggest difference? What are the few things I could do today or this week? What are the most important goals I could set? Small-term goals. What are the parts of myself that are the greatest parts of myself that I could aim towards this realization of this dream, this goal? What are the things that I could do in my, in my routines that will most build the foundation of consistency to build towards a bigger picture of something I'm, I, I want on a normal basis? You know, to build a company, it's essential to do these things. You know, the other, the other one is feeling less than. That sense of inadequacy and that sense of, of, of not being good enough is the, is the greatest lie of the world, of the universe, of all time. You know, that is the absolute biggest lie, is, is that, that you, you're not unique and that you're not special and that you don't have anything to add. Man, that is just the utmost lie. The truth is, 
is that you're extremely unique. You're wired in a way that's different than mo- than anyone else. You're you're one in in you're oh, you're better than one in a million based on Gallup and Clifton Strengths and those and that science, which is a is a very well tested science. You heard me talk about the the analogy or the metaphor of a of a dam damming up a river and creating a lake. If you leave it sitting too long, it stays stag- It gets stagnant. The water's not, you know, you need to keep some type of flow. And there's mechanisms that are happening in the dam that allow the dam to open or close and let more or less water out to regulate and keep the natural flow of things happening down, downstream. You know, you've seen different lakes lower and get higher, and, you know, the, the water levels change in lakes for a reason, sometimes, you know, for all kinds of reasons that we don't need to dig into. But if you just think about that as getting stuck, you can you can consider the idea of no purpose. If you're just damming up a, a lake to dam up the lake, and there's really no purpose. Then who cares whether or not you open or close it, and all these other things, and who knows what's going to happen? You're going to be reactive to anything that happens and the needs of, of that come up. But if you have purpose in why you're dam put damming a, a river and creating a lake, and then you're fulfilling that purpose in what you do, then it's a much different story. So the the pylons to that are when we get overwhelmed. So if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling a sense of being burdened by all the things happening in your life and all the things that you need to do, then you're not in that flow of freedom. We can avoid a sense of overwhelm with a larger vision and a clarity of purpose in how we do that, of how we go about doing that. There's The only person you need to compare yourself to is yourself. And the only person you need to worry about being the best at being is you. Your purpose, your vision, your actions that you're taking are the points of things that you get to do. So the number, the two things that you can manage the most that will change your life are your thoughts. So your thoughts are the words you're using internally to yourself, with yourself, so your internal talk and your internal thoughts and messaging, and the words you use in communicating to others. If you can manage your thought, your the words you use with yourself and others, You can manage the sentences and the words that you're putting out in the universe and the tone and all the things about how you're communicating outwardly into the universe. And you can manage what's going on inside yourself. Everything else can become clear. And having a vision helps you avoid a lot of the things that you might choose to allow that end up causing disruption. Because when you have a clear vision that's large enough for you to be excited and driven towards it, bigger than you can imagine, bigger than you can do on your own without the help of some type of higher power, with, with, with God at your side, with friends at your side, with camaraderie and collaboration and community. You don't have a lot to work on necessarily. The number one thing you can do is start looking at your strengths. You know, in, in midli- midlife, so to speak, people talk about midlife. I like to think about it as, as partway through my life. I don't know if it's mid or not. You know, at some point in life, many people end up standing in at, in, on a pile of the thoughts of what we failed that you don't want to repeat ever again, right? So I, I, remember I 10 years ago or so, I was standing on the, what I, uh, the, the metaphor I use is I was standing on a pile of failures looking to never repeat them, holding them under my foot not to let them get away so that I could move forward without making the same mistakes or having the same problem. And that was a very unresourceful way to approach moving forward into anything. And it, uh, had, keeping bad things from happening wasn't a very good purpose. It was a very, it was a very away from motivation. It was a it was motivation based on what I didn't want. And although it made sense in my mind, and it was clear that that was was going to work, I, I I knew things I didn't want, and I had actions I was working towards, and I had visions for specific goals of what I wanted that success to look like. I had lost sight of the bigger overarching vision for life. And it's something I continue to work on. And finally realizing that's part of the idea of falling in love with the journey of life, falling in love with the day-to-day, falling in love with the moment. Part of that is having the bigger vision and having the sense of confidence to know that we're working towards something that we that can be achieved. Because why not? What I did is I went back. I was having a difficult time connecting into the thoughts of what excited me for for today and tomorrow. So I went back and I went through this list of things that I had done in the light in my life that I ever thought was cool. And I went back as far as being a kid and running down the street with a certain watch on my hand that 
I thought made me look really cool as I ran down the street and I'd look down and see my arm with this leather band and looked really thick and wide and it just made me feel great. And so I added that to my list, something I did that I thought was cool, no judgment. So it doesn't matter that I was, that I was young and that it doesn't even make sense. I thought it was cool at the time. I could tap into that feeling of what it felt like to feel cool. And I added that to my list of cool things I'd done. And I just built it from there, allowing anything I thought was cool. Even things that, that I thought that I did that was cool while I was doing other things I didn't, that I wasn't very proud of. There's certainly things that I did that I wasn't proud of. But in the midst of that, I did something really cool and I talked about it. And I, I added that to my list. Surfing on North Shore in Hawaii and I got a scar here. I'm not so proud of the scar, but I love the fact that I was surfing on North Shore in Hawaii, catching big waves and having a great time. And also, you know, I, I made, a, made a move that didn't work and caused damage. <laughs> so I could say, I never want to repeat that again. And I could only focus on that. But that was never going to help me get back on a board and get on a wave. What was going to help me get back on a board and get on a wave was thinking about how cool it felt to get to get a, catch a wave. Those are the things that you, that you get to think about today is what are, what are the things that you've done that are cool? That will open you up to the considerations of what you want in the future because you'll tap back into that feeling of being 18, 20, 25 and feeling excited about life and ready to tackle a business or a job or, a, or an adventure or a trip, something you were excited to do that you, hadn't, you had no reason not to and nothing holding you back. I changed my screensaver on my phone to a picture of my grandson crawling across the yard with this amazing look on his face of determination that almost looks like he might be angry. But when you really look close, he's got this incredible look of determination because he was going to crawl across that grass all on his own with no one else's help. And he was so determined. And I leaned down to take this picture. So you want to tap back into that sense of determination and fun and purpose and excitement for something. And just go after it like you were a toddler again trying to walk. You know, look at the babies in the world and think about the. there's no doubt in their mind that they're going to do what they want to do next. There's no doubt in their, their mind that they're going to continue. It's something really serious to consider in how to move forward. And those can be baby steps. But if you want to do it quickly, there's also some really some fast ways of going through this. There's a, there's a way to sit down in less than a day. And just track through some of these things and make it really simple for yourself to start moving forward. Because all it takes is a beginning, a willingness, a place to start to want something better and want something bigger and to want to know your purpose. Be willing and open to hear something or understand something new or different about yourself than you have considered in the past, especially as things in life change. Because oftentimes change is coming to open up a new sense of purpose that you weren't aware of or had lost sight of or some experiences in your life created for you, gave you a passion, gave you a mission or, or a vision of a, a hope that you could do something beneficial in the world. So you can consider that. Why are you here? What are you meant to do? What are the things that people have seen you be the most fulfilled or excited doing? Ask around. Ask the people that have known you the longest, that love you the most. Ask the people that just met you what they think. It's a great way to do that. In designing your strengths, there's processes to walk through to do that for finding your strengths. And it's the same. Learn your strengths. That is a building block that will help you. You may still bump up against overwhelm once you're there, but that excitement will clear a lot of that overwhelm. The natural sense of allowance, of flow, of feelings, and unresourceful things will help you clear those, and you will... Gain a sense of freedom of knowing that those things can flow through you and not stay stuck in you. But having that bigger vision of understanding what you want is key. It's key to making everything happen smoother and faster. And it's only key if you really develop the emotional connection to it in the understanding of what it's really going to feel like and be clear that that's really what you want and then envision yourself in it. Spending the time and investing the time, doing the work mentally, emotionally, doing the work mentally and emotionally that's th that you might think is hard 
So you don't have to work so hard physically grinding through life and hitting all the obstacles. If you're taking action from a place of that vision and that passion, and if you're taking action, then even in overwhelm, it's going to help you prioritize. And that list and understanding of what you want is going to help you understand what to prioritize and what to delegate. Allow that to be developed regularly, daily, weekly, monthly. You know, and the larger the vision, the less it needs to be visited, right? We create these huge visions so that we can visit them every six months, maybe every three, and we can work on pieces or parts of them as we go. But we don't have to revisit that huge vision anymore. Then we'd be in fantasy land all the time. It's important to drill it all back to the daily actions that you know, done consistently, will support getting where you want to go. And the point is, we don't want to be stuck. You don't want to be stuck. No one wants to be stuck. And things come up in life that have the opportunity to create stuck points and seeing them coming and understanding how to process them, having tradition and ritual and everything else can be an absolute lifesaver and a time saver and keep you from losing focus on your goals and on your visions if you have them. So if you're really struggling and you're really feeling stuck and you don't have that purpose, that vision, or that passion, that may be the first step is to really begin to consider that. Over the next few weeks, if you're deeper in that, it may be important to start at different, at different actions and behaviors if it's more about overwhelm and you're already stuck in a place of talking that negatively to yourself. So whatever you do, don't give up hope. The point is, is that you are uniquely you. And you are wired in a way that is essential for the world to, for you to interact with it. You're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. It's up to you to figure out what that is, to find out what that is, and to join communities that, can, that support that type of thinking and that type of processing and that type of discussion, the type of communities that allow you to fail without it being anything other than feedback that you can learn from without criticism and judgment with just feedback. Really consider putting some pen and paper to this over the next week as we dig into the next topic, which will be more about, about overwhelm and how to overcome a sense of, of be feeling stuck in the mud of all the things that you've got to do some of the all or nothing thinking that can come with that. But for now, that's the point is hope. The point is purpose, progress, and vision. The blessings and peace to all, and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of The Point with me, Jeff Spikes. Please visit jeffspikes.com for everything you would need to know to engage with me offline. And lastly, thank you for your time, your attention, and your consideration. This is The Point. The show about